The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Are signs pointing to the Jets making a major draft night splash? We'll talk about why it seems like they are and much more in today's Jake Asman Show. My guest is the great Tyson Rouch from Let's Talk Jets. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. I'm, I'm kind of hungry, little T. I take like a bite or something. Do I have to rate it like one? It's good. <laughs> this one got the deal sign right here. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Bruce Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Happy Friday, Jet fans. Welcome in. It is indeed the Jake Asman Show. Show number two on the day. If you missed it earlier, I played you the full comments from Mel Kuyper Jr. during an ESPN conference call with the media articulating why he thinks the Jets should take Brock Bowers with the number 10 pick. So a lot of good back and forth in that show earlier. Shout out to everyone who tuned in and joining me right now is always one of the great guests that we could have on this very channel. He is one of the best jet content guys out there. Tyson routes. Let's talk jets joins the show. What's up Tyson? Jake long time. No talk, man. How you been? You know, I'm doing good, man. I, I, I don't know if I'm doing as well as you though. You're raising money. You're working three different jobs. You're making it happen on your YouTube channel. I mean, who's got it better than you Tyson? Bro, you do. You are changing the game, man. From the Super Bowl coverage to the combine coverage, you're streaming all the time. Like your work ethic is it's relentless, man. It's impressive what you're doing right now. I appreciate it. So before we start, tell people about this fundraiser you were involved in. I was captivated, uh, you know, by it following along on Twitter and all the updates. And we mentioned it a couple of times on this channel. I know you've been doing it the last couple of years, but yeah. for someone maybe new to you, tell people what you had cooking up the last couple of weeks. Well, first of all, thank you for your support. You helped you helped me out big time last year. Um, and Jets Twitter was phenomenal this year. But uh, I did five miles every four hours for forty eight hours, so it was sixty miles for forty over forty eight hours, uh, raising money for disabled American veterans. And uh, it was very challenging. It was exhausting. A lot of I got pretty sick the second night, where like exhaustion kicks in, dehydration kicks in. But I raised almost five thousand dollars, which was incredible. And uh, Shout out to Fireman Ed too, man. Fireman Ed sent me a couple like motivational texts. He made a very generous donation. So uh, incredible experience. But thank you for all the support from everybody, man, because it was, it was humbling to see everybody kind of rally around it and help our veterans out, which was great. That's awesome. For people who want to be involved, is there still a way for people to donate? Is there a way for people to get involved? Um, I'm making a presentation Tuesday night, but if you want to donate to DAV.org, it's disabledamericanveterans.org. That's kind of where you can go to. Or just, you know, like the one thing for a lot of our veterans, they need they need um. Uh, volunteers to help them out. So they need people to help them take them to the hospital, help different things like get rides, things like that. So DAV.org helps them with that, getting the car service, helps the PTSD. So it's kind of where the organization I'm supporting this year. Very cool. Well, congrats on that, Tyson. And, you Thank know, you're a great guy. I've gotten a chance to meet you a couple of times. And, you know, the, the work you do for vets is incredible. So, you know, as I mentioned at the top, first time I've had you on really since this offseason fully got underway. As we sit here now less than a week, from the NFL draft, like at, at this time of week for now, we will know what the Jets have done in the first round. Let's talk about kind of the overall state of the team. How do you feel about this roster? How do you feel about what Joe Douglas has done going into this draft next week? Well, he entered the offseason with a lot of holes and limited resources, right? He didn't have a lot of cap space, doesn't have a second round pick. So how is he going to plug all these holes? He made win now moves for a win now team. A lot of one year contracts, financially responsible, didn't burden the organization. Some calculator risk, I think, with the guys that you got with your little older with the injury risk. Mike Williams loved the player, but when's he gonna be ready? So you like the moves, you know. He swapped out Huff for Reddick. So a lot of moves you like, and you can you can buy into it. But health is gonna be paramount, man. And he still has some work to do with the draft. But 
I think we're all getting excited. I think heading into the offseason, we're all kind of skeptical. Like, you got to show me something. I'm not buying in. And then slowly but surely, he surprised it with some moves. And you feel a little bit better about things. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. But they still have some moves to make in their draft, I think. I think I got my day screwed up, by the way. It's not next week. It's it's two week, weeks for the yeah, draft. Week Thursday, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to Vegas for it, doing my show from uh, Circa Resort and Casino. Free plug, Circa. You're welcome. And uh, I, I'm already just – I want to get to Vegas already. And I just moved back to New York, and I already want to go to Vegas. I mean, that's where my mind's at. <laughs> uh, speaking of Vegas, I'm rocking a UFC shirt because I know you're a big UFC guy. UFC 300 tomorrow. Before we get to more Jet stuff, Give me your feel for this card. Is he going to live up to the hype as being one of the greatest fight nights in the history of the promotion? Well, Dana White changed it up with a $300,000 bonus for Friday the night and performance bonuses. These guys, you're going to get their best fight from everybody. And there's so many great fights, man. Holloway and Gagey, you know, Cody Garbrandt starting the night off. You saw um, Holly Holm. You Kayla Harrison looks all sucked out because she's down to 135. I, I can't wait, man. Every fight is must watch. Such high level matchups, too. It's going to be exciting, man. I can't wait. Is there one fight that you're the most excited about? I know there's a ton, but is there one that you're like, man, I, I, no matter what I'm doing, I'm, I'm making sure I'm locked in for this. KG Holloway. I yep. love that fight. That's like the BMF title, but these guys just slug it out. They're going to stand up strike and they don't, they don't back down, man. Huge chins. That's a must watch fight. In my opinion. Can't wait. All right. UFC 300. Uh, cannot wait. Pay-per-view tomorrow night. It's going to be crazy. Getting back to the Jets. So you mentioned, of course, that health is going to be paramount and there's no doubt out of the signings they made, right? Tyron Smith, Mike Williams, trading for Morgan Moses. Which one was your personal favorite of all the moves they have made so far? Oh, that's a great question, man. I'd probably say Mike Williams. I think that I was I was really about getting as many playmakers as humanly possible. The injury does concern me, though. Like not knowing when he's gonna be available. I like that. Tyron Smith is a great player. You're worried about his age, his durability, and you want like with him, you need a contingency plan. You need a backup behind him. Like I go sign Bakhtiari, you know. Morgan Moses coming off a peck injury. You're like, I was shocked this by the trade. Be like, all right, a little bit older. Mike Williams, I think, can just, when healthy, can just blow this offense open, dude. And that's what I'm really excited about because we need that. Garrett Wilson needs his running partner at this point. No doubt. Do you feel confident in, you know, the the offensive line being what it is right now? Are you leaning, hey, we need Bakhtiari, we need Connor McGovern, a draft? Like, I, like, we know the line on paper is light years better than what it was. I mean, the three guys they replaced, they can't even get jobs right now to put it in perspective. But going into this draft, what's your level of confidence in the offensive line? I guess I have concerns with Keith Carter as a coach and Hackett as a coach. So that kind of takes away my excitement a little bit. But they're veterans, they're quality guys, they're work ethic guys, which is good. But you need more depth, man. I'm never comfortable. We're at Bakhtiari. McGovern's a great idea. I draft somebody. Like, keep stockpiling talent. You got a whole Carter Warren develops. But until you see them all, like the starting five in the last week of training camp, practicing together and going to week one together, then you feel a little more comfortable. But you, you just, it's like big hope. Like, the football gods owe the Jets on offense, man. Because all the <laughs> injuries they've had, right? Like, the, the offensive line's been destroyed for years now with injuries. They're due to get like some fortune on their side, I would think. Yeah, it'd be nice. I mean, you know, I, I famous last words by me a year ago. I'm like, well, there's no way they could lead the NFL in offensive line injuries two years in a row. And guess what happened? <laughs> so I don't know. Nope. I, I believe it do. It, you can't be more due than the Jets after having Aaron Rodgers for all but <laughs> four plays last year. I mean, and before we get to the draft, just everything I'm hearing from Rodgers this offseason, I see a guy who is hungry. I see a guy who's got a chip on his shoulder, despite what the media wants to say about him or what the haters want to say about him. I think this guy, obviously, if he's healthy, I think he still is capable of being a top-10 quarterback in this league. How do you feel about Rodgers going into the next season? That's all he needs to be, to be honest with you. If he's a top-10 with a really good running game, a really good defense, you're going to win a lot of football games. I think he's motivated, especially you know coming off the injury, he wants, to get, wants that MVP kind of title back. He wants to prove everybody wrong on so many different levels, all the critics, all this, you know, He's going to be, you're going to get the best Aaron Rodgers you could possibly get as his, at his age with his skill set, right? Which is more than enough. So I'm, I'm excited for him. I'm curious to see how the Jets handle all these guys, the older guys, in terms of like practice management, especially Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses. Do they give them like those days off? Do they platoon guys in and out? Like, how do they handle them? Because you want to keep them healthy. You don't want to kill them in training camp. You want them on the field, you know? But the one question I have for you is, I was really bothered by the way they handled Bryce Huff. I, I annoyed, it just annoyed me to no end where I thought they could have got a deal done last year before the year. They let, he let him bank on himself. He made big money, but do you like the way they handled him? And do you like the replacement with Reddick? I think the way they handled him, they, they, they blew it going into the year, not having a deal yeah. done at the bye week getting a deal done. But 
I think it was pretty obvious they were comfortable letting him go because they think his production is a product of he's on a defensive line with Quinn Williams, who gets more double teams than any interior line in the NFL. We look at what Jermaine Johnson did. I think they really do like from everything I've heard. They do really think Will McDonald's going to be a player for them. And while I think it was a mistake to go into the year and not have him extended, I think the fact that they took McDonald told us all you needed to know how they felt about him. So, look, I think Reddick's a better player for at least the now. So, yeah. going to keep Huff. I think they did the next best thing. I mean, Hassan Reddick for a third-round pick, three drafts from now. Who cares? Like, that's as good yeah. of a deal you could make. Yeah, I, I like the pivot to Reddick. I just hate the way they handled Huff. You kind of want to keep him around, let him keep blossoming into a great player. And now, I guess, with Reddick, you take the pressure off McDonald as well, where he can still keep growing and not be saying, you know what, we need eight sacks this year from you. Like, you can let him still, you know, get his reps and keep learning the NFL. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, too, look, the Jets don't deserve the benefit of the doubt for a lot of things, especially on offense, but at least defensively, their coaching staff on that side of the ball is tremendous. Like, the defensive line development is great. I mean, Bryce Up being a great example, of course, but, yeah. I mean, Solomon Thomas was a nobody, really good contributor yep. player. I mean, Quentin Jefferson, six and a half sacks last year, parlayed that into a payday. I bet you Javon Kinlaw will be a really good player for them. Salah, say whatever you want about him as a head coach. But as far as hiring a defensive staff and developing guys, Quincy Williams comes to mind, DJ Reed, like the whole defense, Tony Adams. It's not like they have first rounders everywhere yeah. that were like these star players. They have been able to get the most out of their talent. So I, I think if they're willing to let Huff walk, that tells me, all right, they know what they have in McDonald and they think Reddick's a better player. Yeah, you got to have faith in Ulbrich and Salah. But then on, on the offensive side, I'm curious to get your take on this before we go to the draft is, you know, Rodgers coming back, do you think the offense automatically is going to be better? But do you think they change their offense a little bit where it's maybe a little more run-based, where it's like not protecting Aaron Rodgers, but kind of limit his opportunities a little more, feed Brees, kind of ground and pound, and kind of open up the, you know, like, do you think they change a little bit this year to kind of keep Rodgers on the field? I hope so. You know, I heard Rich Samiti say on Will Parkinson's podcast that they're definitely going to add a veteran running back. He, he didn't think they were going to take one of the draft at all. So when I heard that, I'm like, all right, well, like, hopefully it's like a J.K. Dobbins type or Zeke. Yeah. Like, as great as Rodgers probably still can be, I don't know if he's going to be great day one. Like, make it easier on him, man. Like, run the ball, play action, rely on your great defense. Yeah. I certainly hope they could do that. I mean, really, I think it's probably the most underrated thing in football last year, the year Brees Hall just had. So, like, could you imagine now with – more leads and non stack boxes for him. So like as much as we all want to see Aaron Rodgers throw 50 touchdowns, he could throw 30 and this team could be elite because Brees Hall might be the best offensive player in the league next year. 100%. And that's the best way to do it too, man. You, you, you protect him, play action pass, but I want a veteran running back in the worst way because you want pass protection, a rookie running back while they may be a good runner. Can they pick up the blitz? Can they protect Aaron Rodgers in a big spot? And you also want the short yardage guy too, right? You want the short yardage guy, a good spell for Brees Hall, so I take the veteran any day, man. Before we get to the draft, let's plug Fanatics. We teamed up with Fanatics. We got some awesome discounted Jets gear for all my fellow Jet fans out there. See underneath the description. And also, I know there's a lot of Knicks fans who watch the show, Yankee fans. So I put up some Fanatics Yankee and Knicks gear that you could get a discounted rate on because you're a fan of this show. Well, I assume you're a fan of the show. Maybe you like Tyson Rouch, and that's why you're watching. But check down below you? if you want some Jets gear. From Fanatics, they got Yankee stuff there. They got Nick stuff I put down below, so check that out. And a lot of the Jet stuff is on sale because, obviously, they have the new uniform release next week, Tyson, we think. But yeah. it's it's a new release, but it's an old logo coming back. So, like, the new logo is now old. The old logo is now new. So, like, all your current Jet stuff is still wearable because yeah. <laughs> it's still kind of the most recent logo, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, it's fun, man. Like, I, I can't wait for it to come out. I want to buy some new stuff, so I'm, I'm down with it. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's it's crazy, man. Before we get to the draft, awesome comment here from Hater, who's been an asthmatiac for one full month. Tyson, been following your work, Jets, for years. Thank you for all you do for veterans. As a U.S. Army veteran, I salute you, brother. God bless. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. And thank you for your service, Hater. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, Alfonso says, smash the like button. That's right. If you respect our troops, our great veterans, hit the like button. Awesome comment there by Hater. Thanks for watching the show, Alfonso. So I got some draft takes I want to fire off at you, Tyson, and get your thoughts. Before we do that, though, 10th pick of the draft. How are we feeling? I mean, are you leaning weapon? Are you leaning lineman? Are you leaning trade up, trade down? Like, what's your what's the Tyson Rouch feel uh, for the Jets with that number 10 pick? I feel like we're in no man's land at 10. I wish we were higher, to be honest with you, because I think we're going to wait for so many things to happen. I think the draft changes at, what, four with the Cardinals. I mean, Cardinals, Chargers can change everything up. The Giants can change it up. So at 10, I, I want a playmaker, man. I do. I just want as many explosive options on offense as humanly possible for Aaron Rodgers. For me, that means playmaker. And that could come in different forms. That could be a receiver. It could be a tight end. But uh, to me, it's like I think we have enough depth in the offensive line now where we can get one in the third round or we can go for the third round trade up for an offensive line. 
a lineman, but a playmaker, man. Give me one. But the problem is, will they be available? That will the guy be that you want there? Now that's the question. So I think they're trading up. I think they're trading up if they could get Roma Dunze. I think that's their guy. I think he's the 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 comp for Devonte Adams as far as playing style. I think they have kind of tease the Mike Williams situation being like, like, yeah, we think he'll be ready for week one, but they're not like, they want to make it very clear. They're not like expecting it. Like, even though Mike Williams says he thinks he'll be ready for week one, I think because they've also yet to sign another veteran receiver at this point, I think their intention is if they can to trade probably to eight, let's say with Atlanta and get Roma Dunze, assuming he's the third receiver there. That's my feel. I think they've done a lot of homework on the receivers as well. I know that, you know, Troy Franklin's coming in for a top 30 visit, I could see them if they can't trade up trading back. And then if they trade back, then maybe trying to trade back up using the third round pick, they get in the trade back, let's say Tyson to get a receiver into the second round. So but, I said a lot there, but my feeling is I do see them trying to be aggressive for a weapon. I'm with you. But how do you see it playing out? Cause you figure to me, it's like the chargers are they accounted to be like, you know, there's like three teams that want to come up for a quarterback. Do you see the first four picks being quarterbacks? Like, how do you see that playing out? Cause that could change a lot because you figure the Chargers, if they don't trade back, they need a receiver. The Giants could go receiver as well. That's two. So, like, how do you see, the, like, the top five playing out right now? So, I think it goes quarterback, 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 one through three. Okay. I'm not convinced that Arizona won't just take Marvin Harrison and call it a day, and then it's the Chargers who trade back because they want capital. So, let's say the four quarterbacks go within the first five picks. One of the receivers is off the board. I think the Giants probably take Malik Neighbors. I think seven, Tennessee's going to take an offensive lineman. And right. I think a Dunze's there at eight, and the Jets could go and get him if they want him. Yeah, because the Falcons would probably go defense. So they don't, yeah, they could, I could see that happening. Yeah, I think the Giants are the curveball for me. That's the team I'm not really sure what they're going to do. They also but, could go quarterback, too, by the way. If that's exactly how one yeah, of these then, guys falls. Then yep. they, then, yeah, then he falls even more. So then how would you, how are you ranking your wide receivers in terms of, I mean, obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. is number one. But you're ranking, is it Neighbors and Dunze? How are you ranking them? I like Neighbors better, but after doing a film review yesterday on Dunze with uh, Andrew Fialco from Jet, Jet X, I, sign me up for Roma Dunze if they can get him. Yeah, I agree, man. He's, he's, I mean, we can get one, either one of them, I'd be happy. But then it's so it's like, all right, if you have eight, you're trading up to eight. What do you want? What's the most you're willing to give up to go up to eight? Ooh, you know, I heard Rich Samini bring up uh, both fours would be would equal the trade value. I if I could trade one of my fours this year and a pick next year, next I'd prefer year. to do it that way. Because like, why would Atlanta not want to move back two spots when they're going to get the same player anyway? They're getting extra picks. Yeah. Like to me, it'd, it'd be it'd be nonsensical for them to turn that down. So I think that's what I would look to do. I would try and deal one of my fours. And you know, Rich also said that if they wanted to get up to five or six, he oh. thinks it would potentially cost your third this year and your two next year, which is a lot. But if you believe in the player, it's better than trading next year's one. Yeah, if you're getting like a legitimate game breaking talent, it could be worth it. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's interesting. I think I can see going up to eight. I can't see going up any higher than that though. Cause you need, you need to come away with some picks on day two that you hit on. So like you can't, you can't dump away your, your second and your third, you don't even have yeah, a second. So a second. Yeah. I'm with you. That's why I think if you connect the dots, the signs are pointing to, if they're going to make that big splash up, it's for a Dunze. And then I think the, the signs are there that they look to trade back. If they can find a trade partner, recoup that second, if they can. And if they recoup that second, all of a sudden they have a third, they got two fourths. Why not trade back into round one? If there's a player you really love, they're doing a lot of work on these receivers. Maybe yeah. they use that second they got in the trade down. They come back into round one, get the fifth-year option on one of these guys, and take one of these receivers at the end of the first round. Lad McConkey, Ricky Parasol, uh, Troy Franklin. There's a lot of guys that I know they're doing homework on. Now, who do you think needs to be on the on the board at 10 for them to trade back? The quarterbacks are gone. See, there's four quarterbacks gone. Well, there could be a fifth one that's saying, you know what, they want to come up and get that. will be a defensive player because they'll defensive guys are all still going to be there. Who would do you think has to be there where we can actually trade back? I hope teams love Penix or Bo Nix and they're willing yeah. to come up. I, I think maybe getting the first defensive player, if you know Atlanta maybe surprises some folks and they trade out or a team trades up for the Atlanta for a quarterback, right. that could be appealing for a team coming up for a defensive player. But it's tricky. And honestly, I, I'll get to the Brock Bowers discourse with you here in a moment. Maybe there's a team trading up for Bowers. I don't want the Jets to take him at 10, but maybe there's a team that does value him that wants to take him that high. Now, is there an offensive lineman that that's there? Be like, you know what? We're not trading back. We're definitely taking him. I think Alt's gonna be gone. I think he'll definitely be gone. But is there a guy that's sitting at ten? Like, you know what? This is our guy. It's not gonna. He's not gonna win. He's not gonna start now, guy. But he's gonna play eventually because offensive line's got a history of injuries. 
Do you fall my, in that boat or no? Yeah, my my preference with that would be the guy that they take a 10 and they don't trade out if it's an offensive lineman, that guy's got to be able to play multiple positions. Because like I look at it like that guy's got to be like a Swiss Army knife this year because that's the value of taking a guy that high. Like If you're going to use the top 10 pick on a lineman, he's got to be able to play guard and tackle. Yep. So you're covered in case there's the classic jet injuries we always know is coming. Yep. Yeah, and that's the – see, the, what I'm always curious about is what's the drop-off from the top guys to the third round? So if you Say you go wide receiver at 10, which I'm completely fine with. I want to move up in the third round, in the second round, and get better value at offensive line. Because you want, like, what are the tiers of offensive linemen? What's available? You don't want, like, scraps. You don't want to start reaching and getting projects. The projects aren't going to help. You're going to need a guy that can play at some point this year, right? Yep, 100%. I, I mean, that's why, like, Troy Fatano, I think, is so intriguing because yeah. he could play left tackle, guard. Like, Falaga's really good, but they say he's only a right tackle right. or right guard. So it's like, well, you're more worried about Tyron Smith getting hurt than you are Morgan Moses. Yeah, 100%. You need versatility. The Jets like versatility, too. That's Joe Douglas's thing. Yeah, and look, say, say whatever you want about ABT. I know he's been hurt, but like that 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 was a good pick. Like ABT is an all pro level talent when he's out there, and he's had two fluke injuries, and you hope that never happens again. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, what is your Brock Bowers is a guy that it divides the fan base, man. Oh, it, divides, yeah. it divides analysts. Yeah, it's people are campaigning for him, people are campaigning against him. Where where do you stand in this mess? <laughs> are you a Bauer boy, uh, Tyson? I want to ask you first. <laughs> I mean. I, I respect the talent. I respect the thing. I think my question would be how would Hackett use him? How would Rodgers use him? I think he's got a lot of ability. Me personally, I would probably go wide receiver, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I, I, people think I hate Brock Bowers. I don't. I understand the appeal of him. Yeah, me too. But you nailed it with Hackett. And also, like, if I'm the Jets, am I really going to be uh, – the Jets are going to be the team that, like, modernizes nailing the, top, the tight end in the top ten? Really? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'd rather just take a receiver. It worked last time they did that in the first round. They drafted the offensive rookie of the year. Like, yeah. just stick, stick to the conventional uh, strategy here when it's such an all-in year. Like, either take an offensive lineman that will raise your floor and provide insurance in case there's disaster with injuries, or take another weapon and say, F it, we're all in. Aaron Rodgers, Mike Williams, Garrett Wilson, Tyler Conklin, Brees Hall, let's go. Let's go win the Super Bowl. Like, that That to me should be the options here. Or trade back and do both. Like, get extra picks. Yeah, I'm with you, too. Again, it's so – it's so he's like a, an intriguing player. I respect the talent. I understand every aspect of his game. we all seen the same things, but it's just like, I don't know, man. Everybody's like, you're going to pass on George Kittle? I mean, we hear that every year with different players. You know, it's just – I think it's just a better needs of wide receiver – Offensive line debt by behind that as well. But Bowers, I don't know, man. If you trade back, if you trade back and get him, all right, maybe, you know, I consider that. But <laughs> how do you feel about Tyler Conklin? Because I, I feel like he gets the Bauer boys try to like diminish Conklin, who's been top 10 in yards and receptions the last two years with garbage throwing him the ball. So I just look, I'm not sitting here telling you that he's Travis Kelsey, but I think with Aaron Rodgers, I, I, like I, I could see Tyler Conklin putting up the exact same numbers that Dalton Kincaid just put up with Josh Allen. But we talked about this last year. We're like, oh, Conklin could have a huge year with Rodgers, all these big numbers, and he's been dealing with complete garbage. The offense has been garbage. The quarterback's been terrible. He's got all the ability in the world, man. I think he can do a lot with him. I think he's a he's a legit tight end the Jets can make, you know, make the most of. And then Rucker, too, if he could ever stay healthy and keep developing, could be an asset. So but I like Conklin a lot, man, to be honest with you. Are they yeah. going to restructure him? What are they going to do with his contract? You know, to me, he'd be a guy that you maybe would extend for a year just to lower his cap number, but yeah. it do doesn't sound like that's down the pipeline right now. I would definitely do that. I would. I, yeah. And also like Jeremy Rucker will get, get an opportunity to play this year after he's developed for two years, like typically tight ends. Yeah. Most of them kind of hit the ground running in year three. It's a tough position. So it's like, this guy's basically redshirted for two years behind CJ Uzama. Now he gets a chance to play. Like, it, look, I'm not saying you don't take Bowers because you, you took, took Ruckert in the third round a couple of years ago. If you think Bowers is that good, but he better be that good. Cause otherwise you're basically burning a third round pick from a couple of years ago. And Jeremy Rucker. No, I completely agree. Now, the one question I have for you is, is Joe Douglas's mindset going into this draft? Is he looking for win-now players in a win-now year where he's like, you know what? I have a sense of urgency where I need contributors. No second-round pick. I've got to be more like, need more money in the bank. Or can he say, you know what? He's kind of comfortable now. Had a pretty good offseason. Maybe he has a feeling he's coming back next year for whatever reason. Do you, how do you think his mindset is going into this draft? Will he be aggressive, desperate? What do you think? I hope he's like aggressive, but without being stupid. Like there's, I, I get it's a fine line, but like I, I'd like to see them avoid trading next year's one. But if they say F it, we're going to get Marvin Harrison. Like I get it. Um, that pick, I hope to God is pick 32 and it's not disaster and it's in the top 10 again when yeah. something happens to Rodgers, you know? Yeah, that's the curious thing. He's been really responsible in free agency. Nothing like nothing irresponsible. Hopefully he keeps that same mindset in the draft. But I'm just curious to see like what's his level of comfort because, you know, 
will we take a draft? Will we draft a quarterback in this draft? Do they feel that comfortable? Like, you know what? Fourth round going quarterback. Or is it like, you know what? I'll go later on in the draft. Like, I'm curious to see how he plays this all out. Yeah, well, speaking of quarterback, do you see them taking a guy you know, on day two, day three of this draft? I do. I mean, I'm, ass- I'm assuming Zach Wilson's gone. Like, I think after the draft, he'll be gone. They'll probably get like a compensation for next year's draft class. But I, I think Zach's going to be gone. And what better oh, time yeah. to get a young quarterback, right? Get a young quarterback now that could sit behind Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor for two years, learn, develop, no pressure to play unless things completely fall off the rails or they already clinched the division or something. But, yeah, I would definitely take one. Now, the round is interesting, though, because would you be aggressive and go in the fourth round? Like, how aggressive would you be? You got two fourth round picks. It feels like yep. that's the spot to do it because after that, unless you make trades, I mean, you're not picking again until the sixth round. Yep, exactly. And sixth round, you then you're, it's a true project then at that point. Yep, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Shout out to everyone tuned in right now. If you have a comment or a question for myself or Tyson to respond to, write it in, and we will bring that on the screen. We got a lot to get into. Shout out to all the as maniacs out there who are supporting today's show. This one is from Wrong Verb, who became a Patreon member earlier. Shout out to you, Wrong Verb. Hold on. I have my mic brain bang sounder that's not working well. There we go. (laughs) Does the new NFL kickoff rule increase the value of a receiver like Xavier Worthy, who also has elite kick return potential? I don't know if like the Jets are making a decision based on just the kickoff rule, but anyone who's got speed who could help you on special teams, yeah, I think the tiebreaker, that's that becomes a factor now with more of an emphasis on kickoff returns this season. What do you think about Izzy returning kicks with these new rules? Is he going to fumble again like he did in the Thursday night Browns game? Oh, I, mean, I was trying to embrace positivity, man. Just, <laughs> he's got a lot of explosive ability. He shows a lot of good things because, like, everybody put Brees Hall back there. I'm like, you know what? I don't. I, I understand why you'd say Brees, but, like, let's see what Izzy can do if he can hold on to the ball. I agree, which why, like, hearing Samini on Will's pod say they're not going to take a running back. You know, they got Izzy in the pipeline, and the, they're going to add a, a veteran running back. All right, well, that means you're expecting about a Conda to, like, probably play a role for you yep. on specialties because think about it. If something happened to Xavier Gibson, who's your kickoff returner? Like, it'd be Izzy of Anaconda. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man, how they handle that. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, Sharp Instincts writes in, I'm a former USMC. Tyson is an honorary member of all U.S. Armed Force branches. Appreciate all your support, man. He definitely helped me out throughout the uh, the challenge as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Pittsburgh Mike writes in, if you're the Jets, you're thinking that whichever player you take in the first round this year better be a key piece in winning a championship. or raising your floor because like honestly Tyson if they take a lineman and that guy doesn't play uh, that okay the Jets probably won 13 games if everyone stayed healthy up front like that's how talented the roster is so like that's not a bad thing and then that guy starts for you next year and a lot of offensive linemen like look at Andrew Thomas top five pick he sucked as a rookie now he's one of the best left tackles in the league so like that's not the worst thing in the world if you take a guy that high that learns from a hall of famer and Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses that's exactly. You have two excellent mentors, man. And if you can bring in Bakhtiari, another all-time great player. I mean, that's like you can learn endlessly. There's no pressure to play, no pressure to like to worry about killing Aaron Rodgers. Like you're, you can just get groomed, which is an ideal situation. 100%. Let's get to some calls now on the Gus Buster hotline. Shout out to everyone who wants in on the conversation. Make sure you smash that like button. And of course, subscribe to Let's Talk Jets on YouTube if you haven't already. I know you know this guy, Tyson, so he'll lead us off today. It's time for another V-Man call. Hopefully he knows me. Adios mio. <laughs> no way. Oh, baby. It's me, man. I thought Jay the Tyson, man. It, it's good, man. man. So far, sports this year have been pretty interesting. Nick's, Nick looks like they're going to lock up a third seed, hopefully. Um, you got Yankees baseball getting off to a hot start. And I haven't paid attention to hockey, but whatever. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not a hockey. I'm not, Latinos are not known for liking cold. Just well, you, you, you do realize you don't actually have to play hockey to like hockey, B man. Like you, you sit in an arena or you watch it on TV in the warmth. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it, it, it's not our. It, it's not our thing. I acknowledge that. It, it's All right. Really not. But no, honestly, I agree with like what you're. I agree with a lot of what you're saying. You know, on. I was going to ask you guys. A, the other thing I'm really looking forward to this year in sports, you're looking forward to the Olympics. Are you asking if I'm looking forward to the Olympics or you're saying you're looking forward to the Olympics? Are you looking forward to it? Uh, not really, to be honest with you. I don't really care. Uh, I, like I, I follow the basketball. I was, I, I, 
I interned in 2016 for NBC, and that was like the most I cared about it because I was there. I was actually in Rio for six weeks, and that was cool. Oh, but how how was how was Rio? Uh, Rio was great. I have nothing but nice things to say about it. I I really enjoyed it. That, that's great. Yeah, no. But, wait, but you have wait, you have you have hockey playoff starting, basketball playoff starting, the baseball's just started. That's what I think yep. we're all focused on, right? There's so much like this is a great sports time right now. Yeah, and I know, yeah. The Olympics. Who cares about the Olympics right now, V Bad? What are your no. thoughts on downhill skiing? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I watch it because I enjoy it because I like following like following my people. V-Man, thank you for the time. That's the end of that V-Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> no draft takes? <laughs> I, it, it, that was just... I, I, anyone wants to describe V-Man, just show him that phone call. <laughs> Fascinating. V-Man saying Latinas don't do hockey. You don't You don't actually need to play hockey. I never I, I never played ice hockey in my life. I love the Islanders. I love, I love the NHL. I love hockey. Yeah, it's so. He, some of his takes are funny. He's like, "Our people, our people." Like he's speaking for the, the entire region. It's amazing. And also, he used to call himself a Port Italian, and my audience wisely said, "Well, we never hear about his Italian heritage, so now exactly. he just dropped it completely." <laughs> he's excellent, man. Uh, let's keep it rolling here. Hey, wait, Shout- did he really fall asleep a second time? Yes, he did. <laughs> Come on, man. You know what? It, it's a Friday. We all we all could use a good laugh. So why don't we go down the V Man? memory bank shall we ladies and gentlemen v man a best of of him (laughs) falling asleep now i when neil was the first caller today the other guy who i was asked more about last night besides neil is this guy online right now who might be sleeping v man's up next hello v man (laughs) come on (laughs) v man you up yep <laughs> Sorry, Lion is right. Lion is freaking out. Sorry. <laughs> that, that was part one. All right. And then V Man did this. All right. A lot of people still want in on the conversation. Let's go to this guy right now. Uh. <laughs> Let's play the intro and see if it wakes him up. It's time for another V-Man call. Hopefully he no sleeping. Adios mio. <laughs> V-Man? V-Man? Come on. <laughs> Vincent, V-Man, I have Coquito for you. V-Man, you've been named Puerto Rican Citizen of the Year. Wake up, sleepyhead. V-Man, wake up. Vincent? All right. That's the end of that V-Man call. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the best of <laughs> V-Man sleeping. <laughs> Dude, I wish I could sleep like that. Damn. He's he's a legend. There's just there's no one there's no one else like V-Man. It's incredible. That's outstanding. Uh I don't even know what we were talking about when <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. Open phone lines for anyone who wants in with Tyson and I. Shout out to Keith Best. He goes, Jake, you're the best. I'm second because it's my last name. Thanks for the show. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate you. And uh, we're glad to have you as a regular on this show. Comments, questions, super chats for Tyson. Who's going to be coming as Maniac during this show? Let's keep the good vibes rolling here. Shout out to all our as Maniacs here. You know, w- while we wait for more uh, comments and questions to come in for you, Tyson, if I say to you, besides health, What's the biggest key for the Jets in 2024? What would you say that is? I, I remove health because I think that's obvious, right? Like we know about Rodgers coming off injury and, and all the other stuff. But like what to you is like the biggest key for the Jets to have? Let's say a I'm not going to say a Super Bowl season, but a damn good season we're proud of. The play of Aaron Rodgers and overcoming Hackett. I, I think I have a lot of concerns with Hackett's offense and what we saw last year. Even with the quarterbacks changing, just the scheme, the principle, the way the offensive line plays an enormous problem. So – the play of Aaron Rodgers and how like wait, what our expectations are for him. I'm like, are you looking for like the 85 percent of the Aaron Rodgers? Like, what's your level of play? How quickly is he going to start off? Like you mentioned it earlier, like you know, the first couple of weeks he hasn't played in a year, man. Especially yep. in this offense with these players. This is tra- training camp is one thing. Actual game action is a whole other story. So how fast can he get acclimated? How well he can play, and, and then go from there. That's a big story for me, man. We I, we all expect the greatness of Aaron Rodgers. Will we actually get that? 
Yep, no doubt. John checks in. He's using his free Super Chat of the Month for being an Asmaniac. Cha-ching. My choice is trade up for neighbors. Two, trade up to eight for Rome. Three, trade back, pick up a second for an offensive tackle or wide receiver. Four, Bowers at 10, Arizona trip during the year. John, I know you're based in Arizona, so is our pal Rat Diddy. Arizona is definitely on the short list for the uh, road getaway trip this year, but we got to see when the schedule comes out, which I think is about a month from now from coming out from what I've heard. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll get an idea. What road game are you eyeing this year, by the way, Tyson? Tennessee. Nah, Nashville's the awesome. Yeah, you can't miss that, man. Yep. I was there for the draft in 2019, and that was – a blast. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Just like Jet fans in Nashville. I mean, what can go wrong there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, how be much, in, we'll be uh, in New Orleans for the Super Bowl. What could go wrong there? Yeah. But now, how far is everybody willing to trade up, though? Like, what's the what's the highest you'll go, though? That's the question, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how aggressive the Jets are going to be. I think they're going to be aggressive to move to eight if they can get a Dunes. I just have this feeling. Um, That's probably the peak, though, you think, right? Well, unless Joe Douglas really wants to say, F it, I'm going up to five. I'm getting Marvin Harrison if quarterbacks go one through four and he could get Jim Harbaugh to do a deal if Harbaugh is just trying to stockpile picks. That would be – that would just be shockwaves throughout the NFL they did something like that. That would be wild. Yeah. No, there's no doubt about that. I, could you imagine we're watching the draft all of a sudden? You know, we're all thinking like, all right, you know, quarterback one, Caleb two, quarterback three – you know, even quarterback four, let's say, and then it's yep. like, holy crap, the you know, chargers are on the clock, and then that logo down at the bottom flips from red to green. And they take Joe Alt. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? I which I w- I wouldn't hate, but that'd be a little disappointing if you're trading up or thinking they're going to get Marvin, <laughs> you know. That'd be outstanding. You know what? The question I have for you too is what are your thoughts on the safety position? Because Chuck Clark coming back, which we all like coming off injury, Tony Adams, they love Ashton Davis is back, which is good. Is that a concern? Because there's still some big name safeties available right now. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they value the safety position. No, I think Chuck Clark's underrated. I think they also probably told Ashton Davis, hey, we will give you an opportunity to compete for a starting job versus uh Chuck Clark. But I I think it's gonna be Adams and it's gonna be Clark. And I think since they use a three safety set a lot, we will have a role for Ashton Davis. I'd like them to, if they can add another safety in the draft, I'm not opposed to that. You know, I, I know people want Justin Simmons. I don't see yeah. the Jets making that kind of move. I'd be surprised. I think he's still going to get decent money after the draft. I think you're, I think you're probably right. But it's interesting they're still out there. There's a couple guys out there like, you know what? That's the, the market keeps coming down. Maybe you make a move there too. You never know. That's right. The great Andrew Fialco says, all roads lead to Rome. <laughs> hey. Well played. How about that? Uh, Lawrence is using his free super chat for being an Asmaniac for one ah! full month. Hey, Tyson, I love how you have hybrid theory in your background. Linkin Park yeah. is the best. Great album, man. It's a weird, weird rumor going around, too, right? You hear about that? They're having a new singer, but it's going to be a female. Really? Yeah. That's, I don't know if it's, it's a hoax or some kind. There's a rumor going around. They're going to have a new singer, but it's going to be a woman, which I love to see him tour anyway, man. It's an all time great band. Replacing Chester is very, very difficult, but. I'd like to see him come back in some, you know, some kind of format. Yeah, no, that's I did I did not hear that. I'm I, I I'm a uh, fan of Lincoln Park, but I I don't like know anything about like the details of that. So that's yeah. the first time I'm hearing of it. Yeah, it was wild. Back to the Gus Buster Hotline, we go. We got Johnny Quest on the line. Hello, Johnny. What's up, Jake? What's up, Tyson? How you guys doing? What's up, man? Uh, same shit. Just, uh, I've been thinking about it. Bowers trade back. Get no line. I'm thinking, man, you got to get the old line right. We have Aaron freaking Rodgers as our quarterback, right? If Smith gets hurt and he's on his ass, it doesn't matter who the receivers are. He's made Lazar look good, MVS, Enrico Palazzo to name a few. So, you know, Enrico? <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I have nothing for you guys. So I have a coworker of mine. We call him the Fuhrer. He's not a good person. Big Jet fan. He follows you, Jake, and he's always on the channel. He thinks I'm the reason why Rodgers got hurt. So I had an Elijah Moore jersey that I bought before he got traded. So there's a company that sells you the patch that you can put on top of the jersey. So I bought a Rodgers jersey. I bought a Rodgers patch. My mm-hmm. poor mother, she sewed it for me, hand sewed it, and it looked awesome. I wore it the first day when he got hurt. He says, burn the jersey. <laughs> so I want to hear your thoughts on that. 
you know, there's there's too many Jet fans that paid so much money for those jerseys that I, I you can't burn a Rodgers one, especially is it a white legacy? Or no, it couldn't have been because it's Elijah Moore. You no, nah, it, it was a black jersey. Black. Yeah. You know what? Maybe you got to burn the jersey. I'm just kidding. I I, I don't know. Uh, it, I don't I don't blame you, Johnny. I blame myself for having hope last season. That, yep. I, I blame myself more than you. Don't worry. Yep. No, hey, you guys uh, keep up the uh, great content. Take care. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I wore my Aaron Rodgers legacy jersey week one last year. I was as ready as anyone for, for that game. Last year was probably the first year in a long time you actually went – you were actually like almost overconfident. Like, we we talked about it in the preseason. Like, you know, win 11 games, 12 games, going to break all these records on offense, do all these things. And it's just like, you've got to be kidding me. I think Fireman Ed is watching the show. I and I'll tell you why I think it is him. Because it's a, it's a Twitter account with just a dot. My two favorite guys. Hey, Jay, can't tell my handle, but it's me, your favorite, Fireman Ed. He's using the emo- – if you ever text with Fireman Ed, which I know you do, Tyson, <laughs> Fireman Ed's a big emoji guy, and those are the emojis he uses. I actually think this is the great Fireman Ed that is watching the show right now. Uh, 1,000%. That's his emoji right there. I guarantee it. it. <laughs> and I, Yeah, that is 100% Fireman Ed. So in honor of Fireman Ed tuned in live. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Shout out to Fireman Ed. <laughs> All time great. That's awesome. Big fella writes in with a super chat. Cha-ching. Tyson, what do you think about Fontanu and Knobel? Uh, are you aware of who Kno? I know you know about Fontanu, but do you know who Knobel is? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a huge NFL draft guy, so I don't know Knobel. So you can talk about him if you'd like. I'd yes. Like to hear about him. No, I, I think after you learn about him, you probably are going to be on board with the Jets, maybe trading their entire draft to go and get him. So uh, he, he's probably the most under-discussed prospect in the last, I don't know, maybe like 25 years. <laughs> On the 2022 draft pick, <laughs> the pick goes to Knoble out of college. Yeah! <laughs> the great Knoble, uh, a lane train favorite on this show, Tyson. <laughs> I was like, look at him. I'm like, I'm going, I like sheets here. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm like, what in the hell? Oh, my God. That joke was strictly for the The second you said you were unaware, I'm like, this is going to be gold. <laughs> I started literally started sweating. I'm like, oh my god! I like, there's always one guy you don't know. Uh, uh, John writes in NHL game tomorrow is going to be awesome. Go Rangers! Yeah, let me say this: go Islanders. But I am looking forward to Ranger Islanders tomorrow. It's a huge game for really both teams. Rangers trying to figure out where they're going to be positioning, and yep. Islanders still trying to get into the playoffs. You a hockey guy at all, uh, Tyson? Well, how how was the game? Like you went the last game, right? That'd be wild being there for that one. Yeah, you know it's crazy. That was the first time the Rangers have been at UBS all year because they have barely played this year because of the new schedule. And the game at MetLife was technically an Islander home game, so like that didn't yeah, that, that was one last game at UBS this year. How was UBS? I haven't been there yet. You like it? Great building. Yeah, it's got the Coliseum feel with the low ceiling, so it gets loud. But mm-hmm. it's a modern arena with you know you don't have to wait thirty minutes to pee. Like it's, it's tremendous. Yeah, it is tremendous. Up. Uh, let's keep going with the calls right now. It looks like, uh, wow, I cannot believe this guy actually showed his face. A man who owes us 25 memberships in honor of 25 career interceptions by Zach Wilson. Hawk has called in for the very first time. Hello, Hawk. Hey, Tyson. What's up, man? Hey, Jake, before you send me to the shadow run, let me ask Tyson about Zach. At Tyson, don't you think we can keep Zach Wilson and just let him start the first few games? I mean, we all know the kid just needs another year behind center, and that'll really get him going. I mean, growing, man. You know he's freaking awesome, bro. My run win. <laughs> oh, man, you killed me. <laughs> this- Hawk, thank you uh, for calling in, and we'll see you in the realm. Into the shadow realm you go. That's the problem with Aaron Rodgers. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. Or here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the fuck up. (laughs) The Gator special right there, uh, Tyson. What What are your thoughts on Zach? Do you think he's traded after the draft or before it? Uh, I think the draft is the inflection point. So I think he is dealt and they'll get like a laughable return. Like they'll eat a lot of the money and they'll get like a seventh round pick in like 2025 or 2026. Something do you like think, that. 
Do you think there's any world where they release him? I don't think so because they don't want the egg on their face, even more egg on their face. But do you think they can release him at some point? No. Enough. No, it's over. You can't do it. I can't take it anymore. No more Zach Wilson. He needs to leave the Jets. Six. <laughs> I can't do it. I, I don't think so. I, I think he's done. I, I, yeah. I, I think there's no way. Yeah, I agree. Dark Knight Steve checks in with a super chat for us. Thank you, Dark Knight Steve. Appreciate that one. Uh, let's give you a little cha-ching. What needs to happen to get Lane Train, B-Man, Allen, Neil, and King in a roundtable discussion in the Sprinter purely for the content? I don't know how big you think the Sprinter is, Dark Knight Steve, but, man, you're talking about some A-list uh, Asmaniacs there. That would be wild. Um, what would it take? Well, you got to ask Neil to... Get the sprinter first. And once we get that, I think we can get King. I think we can get V-Man. I don't know where Lane Train lives, so that could be a challenge. Um, and Allen, who knows? Do we want Allen? Maybe. So that, logistically, not impossible, but it might be difficult. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, John writes in, that a UFC shirt. Who you got this weekend? It is in honor of UFC 300. Tyson gave out some uh, some picks earlier that he likes. I. Honestly, I don't know who I have yet. I'm going to put together a you know a big UFC card, John. So if you're on Discord, I'll post my picks in there uh, tomorrow at some point. But I'm just excited to watch it just as a fan. Like I can't wait to see some of these fights. Yeah, the entire card, man. Starting the first one, the entire card is loaded. It really is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a shame, too, because I really thought for a while, like, the goal was to get McGregor on this card yep. somehow. But, you know, it, it kind of sounds like maybe he'll be later in the summer, which, all right, we got a great card tomorrow yep. night. And then you save Connor for the summer, which will be great, yep. too. Well, they want the big payday, man. You know, they already have a big payday with the stack card. They got another big payday with him on that one. So it's all That's about the money. Yep. Space it out. Uh, the big fella checks in with a super chat for us. Hey! I think the Jets extend Conklin after the draft to keep the Bauer smoke going. Feel we are trading out. Look, I don't hate the fact that a lot of the mock pundits have the Jets taking Bauer as a 10. It's like the opposite of last year where everyone mocked them to take a, an offensive yeah. lineman. And yeah. look what happened with the trade with New England and Pittsburgh. So I, I don't think they're going to take Bowers, but uh, but I also don't think it's a bad thing that all the mocks are like, oh, they're, they're going to take Brock Bowers here. Is there a pick at 10 that you would absolutely hate? Uh, quarterback or defensive lineman. Other than that, you're good. Any defensive player. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I'm going to be honest. I don't love Bowers at 10, but I can't sit here and say it's a terrible pick. He just better be great right away. I'm giving him no margin yeah. for error. Like this yeah. guy better be Sam Laporta day one. Otherwise, I think it's a horrendous decision to take a tight end in the top 10. Yeah, I agree. Completely agree. More of your calls right now. Let's go to Phil on the hotline. What's up, Phil? What's going on, gentlemen? How you doing? What's up, Phil? Hey, uh, big fan. Jake is always, I'm always on trying to come up here, bring up some new opinions. Uh, Tyson. You're fun, man. Your your channel's fun. Seeing some of the stuff you come up with, your takes. <laughs> uh, so, for pick 10, something that would be really shocking, uh, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to trade down. The Fontanu or Fontanu news has been pretty cool. Um, I think trading back down, if you grab Fontanu, how far? My thing is, here's a good take I'd like to ask you guys. How far down is too far down now that Fontanu is – seemingly becoming like a really good third or fourth option at OT. Do we fall back as far as, I don't know, the Rams? I've seen some mock drafts picking, uh, I think they're at 19, so yeah. taking some of their picks. 20 with the Steelers would be crazy. I feel like Fatanu right now, if he's not top four, he's, t excuse me, top five, and if Alt goes, leaves four, and then would pick 10, Defense run would be really nice. That would give us the uh, the room to to trade back down. I think quarterback and defensive room. Yeah, I think Fatano's going sixteen at the latest to yep. Seattle. Seattle needs linemen. They scouted him in their own backyard. There, I could see that fit. So I think if you want Fatano, you got to do a trade back. And I mean, you could just take him at ten. By the way, there's nothing wrong with that if you believe he's that good. Like I know Nicole to the bar, know. right? That I would say then. Yeah, yeah I, I would say yeah. Probably Indy's probably like the the farthest you could go to still have a shot at getting him. Cause I'd be surprised. Maybe Seattle does something different. Who knows? I mean, last year they wanted everyone to think they were going to go like quarterback and they took a defensive player. So like, you never know, but yeah. uh, I, I think probably Indy is the farthest you'd want to go. If Fatano's your guy, but if he's truly your guy, this is why I think it's harder. It's easier said than done to say trade back, trade back, trade back. Because if Joe Douglas thinks Fatano is the next 10 year starter, I love tackle on this team. And he can guard you right away. He's not going to risk it. He's just going to take him at 10 and call it a day. Yeah. 
Oh, shoot. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great reasoning. And then at that point, you might as well chalk up the uh, third round pick as a wide receiver call it a day. Yeah. yeah. Or you, you so, maybe you or trade turn back. Right yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. aggressive. Good call, Phil. Yeah. I mean, that that's what makes the draft fun, especially I think this year from a jet perspective, because they really are so many different avenues they can go. And it's such yeah. an important all in year that you would expect maybe a heightened aggressiveness from this GM, because what does yeah. he care about picks a couple of years from now? He won't be here if they don't win. You're also curious about what the Broncos, the Raiders, the Vikings, how, what do they do? How far do they go up? Where do they go up? So the quarterbacks, that's going to dictate a lot for the draft, man. That's the most exciting part of this. Like the Chargers fascinate me with Harbaugh there and how they handle that. I, I can't wait to see what they do. Uh, UFC question for you from Hawk. So we'll, we will allow it from Hawk. What are your thoughts on Bo Nicole versus Donk Donkerson being on the main card of UFC 300 ahead of several former champions and title eliminator fights? They're trying to get he's like a rising star, man. They're trying to give him his light, you know, give him grow his following. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it. You know, I'm a, like I'm an old school fan, man. It's like these other guys, they, they should get the spotlight. Even like, you know, Gar Brent and um Dave and Dave Varedo, they're freaking the first fight of the night, man. That's kind of like a little bit disrespectful. You know, if you watch a UFC fight, you usually watch at 10 o'clock, you don't watch at seven o'clock. You know what I mean? So I know why the I know why the UFC did it. I still don't necessarily agree with it though. Yeah, it's interesting they're doing that, but I think I think you nailed it. Like they're all about trying to promote and find their next stars, and the yep. spotlight of putting a guy on UFC 300 is greater than anything else. The main card's where it's at. That's how you promote guys. Gonzo writes in: uh, If Rattler's available in the third round, should the Jets trade up over teams like the Giants to get him? I don't think the Giants are going to take Rattler. For the record, I want to make that clear. I think the Giants could trade back in round one to get Michael Penix or Bo Nix or whoever they like. If they don't do it at six, by the way, I don't rule that out. Um, I don't know if you've watched any Spencer Rattler. I like the fact that he's incredibly talented, former five-star guy. He was the MVP of the senior bowl. From what I've seen, he's appealing. I don't I, I don't know if I would take a quarterback in the third, though. I feel like that pick still needs to be used on a player that's helping you this year and not a developmental quarterback. Yeah, I mean, you're, you have no second-round pick. You need as many player, playmakers as possible, especially if you go offensive line in the first round. You got to go wide receiver in the third round. Yeah, I, I just I'm later on fourth round, or, or if at all. I mean, that's can't do third round. Project Prospect with Dom C checks in. Bang! bang! We give you the double bang, Dom. We love what you bring to the Jet community. Arguing with Zach Truthers all day long on Twitter. So happy to be here. Lots of second, third round receivers being brought in for visits. O-line at 10 incoming. Or, Dom, you would know better than me, trade down and still get the offensive lineman, perhaps? I mean, yep. look, I, I do think, kind of what we alluded to, if they can't get a Dunze, I feel like the – Trade back, get extra picks, trade back up is in play. Just take it the best lineman at 10. And hey, it's a loaded receiver class. We'll move up if they get one, or we just stay at yep. 72 and we could get someone really good as well. Yeah, I agree. Piper has 15 receivers going in his in, in the first two rounds. 15. Hey man, it's a passing league, man. That's where you see all the playmakers and you get get the four, you know, get the four or five year contract with these guys. You know what I mean? So you got to do. 100%. 100%. Dom, call in any time, my man. Gator checks in. Tyson, with the success of WrestleMania, do you think UFC would ever have oh. totally fake, scripted, stupid fake fights? No, absolutely not. I think it's a I, I, I for Gator. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd hope not. Uh, more calls right now. A couple of OGs are on the line. Let's go to Southern Jet. He's up next. What's up, Southern Jet? Yo. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Tyson. How Long time been? no talk, man. How you been? Yeah, all right. How you been? Good. Um, I just got a short comment. First of all, uh, a couple hours ago, I was watching Jake's first show on replay, and my wife was behind me in the closet cleaning up, and I, I, I fake called. She didn't know. I hit the mute, and I said, "Yeah, Jake. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize if I know any noise. My old lady's, you know, got her ass back in there cleaning <laughs> up." She's, you know, the stupid, you know, <laughs> she came out so pissed off. That's funny. You know? <laughs> but my point was the, uh, I, I, I'm really, the, the closer we get to the draft, uh, I, I want a, a, a lineman. And the reason being is I think they are a first year contributor. And there is so much wide receiver depth in, in the later rounds. I mean, we could even get Tez Walker in the third round, I think, you know, he's, he's dropped a little bit and he's an X and I want an X wide receiver. I don't want a slot. One of the reasons why I don't want Bowers, but, but the lineman, especially, you know, the guy who plays guard and tackle, 
he's going to, they're going to play. They're going to contribute. The most important thing in football, if you have an offensive line, you're competitive in December. It proves out for the last 60 years. That's just the way the NFL works. You can have a mediocre quarterback, a mediocre team, a good offensive line. You will compete. And then you add that to an elite defense. So that's why I want a lineman because he will, A, contribute. A, he'll play if someone gets hurt. But B, it allows Rodgers to do everything he needs to do mentally. It just makes too much sense. And I don't, we got burned by not getting a quarterback when A, Aaron was signed. Everybody complains about when he got hurt. It was like Jake was saying, when he got, when Aaron got signed, we should have been signing somebody. Exactly. You know, you know, we don't want to get burned a second time. And we will get, if, if our linemen go down and we don't get a lineman, that can contribute in year one and come in and help. I didn't say start, but help. We will have people saying, eh, you know, we blew it. We didn't learn from our past mistakes. I want protection and I want to go with the NFL history, the history of average to better than average offensive lines. You compete in December every damn year. Rich, totally fair. The only argument to make for a weapon, I think, is if one of the big three receivers are there because you're also yeah. one Garrett Wilson rolled ankle away from not having a great wide receiver room. I don't know what Mike Williams is yet. I have no idea what to get, what I'm getting from Alan Lazard. I have no idea really what Xavier Gibson or Jason Brownlee is. So like to me, and if they do make that move, well then you have to sign Bakhtiari and Connor McGovern. Maybe they should do that anyway. If they take yep. a lineman, cause I don't think you could have enough protection for Rogers, but Rich is Rich is right. I think if they trade, if, I think if they go weapon though, you can almost guarantee their next pick would be um, an offensive lineman. Like I, I'd be very surprised if the order is not lineman, receiver, receiver, lineman, yeah. no matter how they slice it in the draft. Now, if you go wide receiver in third round, would you go out and try to sign a Beckham or something, somebody else too, or would you feel comfortable? I would, I would, I probably would. I mean, unless, unless they really think like they're going to fix Lazard, but like, why would you bank on that after what we no. saw last year? No, that, and that's the whole concern, man. You mentioned it. It's like, you know, I understand the whole offensive line thing. The other thing Rich didn't mention is you're helping this year and the future because two of these guys could be gone next year. So you need a whole offensive line help next year. So you have this year and next year, which is good. But the wide receiver room, man, you're Garrett Wilson injury your way from being in big trouble. Yeah, you know, and, and, trouble. and I, hate, I hate to say it, but like, you know, I fear for the Garrett Wilson injury because it's like we can't have nice things. It's like we have Aaron back, but oh, we lose Garrett Wilson. We never get to see this beautiful connection that was going to be Devonte and Aaron in New York all over again. Like yeah. I, I worry about that. So yeah, I mean, if you get a Dunze, honestly, his comp probably is Devonte at his best. Like I, I'm on board. Uh, um, so one more question though. So with the offensive line though, let's just say if their vision is, you know what, they have in their back pocket, McGovern's going to come back. I kind of think they already do. They're waiting until after the draft and Bakhtiar. They know these guys are kind of on their way does that take pressure off that first that number 10 pick we're like you know what we already know what we have in our pocket they're going to sign after the draft whatever deal we can be more aggressive and go for that wide receiver take a chance because we don't have pressure to fill the offensive line hole yeah I, I think i think that's part of it too i think that's i think that was the goal of the jets this offseason go into yeah. the draft without a glaring need you know yep. and I, they've done that give, i'll give the jam credit for that um Adam says, why would the Giants pay Jones $160 million to then just draft another quarterback? couple things. One, it wasn't actually $160 million. It was a two-year deal and guarantees. Yep. This is the second year. He's coming off an ACL injury. Before that, he was dealing with neck issues. Daniel Jones can't stay on the field. Even if he was a good quarterback, there's major durability concerns, and I don't think he's any good. I think everything needs to be perfect for him to be an average to maybe slightly above average quarterback. I think we've seen that now over the course of of his career. And it's the old adage. If you believe in one of these quarterbacks, you take them like that's, that's, that's why like you can't win without a quarterback. So if the giants are in love with a Drake may and he falls or JJ McCarthy and he falls, that's why they do it. But I think what they'll do is if they can't get the guy that wanted the top of the draft, they have a second round pick. They could trade back into the first round to get the fifth year option and take a guy there. Yeah. They didn't draft him first of all, and they had to pay him. He won a playoff game. He looked great in the playoff game. The family, right. if you let him walk, they had to pay him. Right. Like, they took a chance, didn't work out, and they could just move on if they have to. Well, and then the other thing, too, I'm sorry, the other thing, too, is the, the, the kid they draft can learn from him this year, too. There's not pressure to play. Let Daniel Jones play, mark himself, do what he want. Away he goes, and you got your kid to play. Good point. Oregon Jet says Beckham's washed, not a viable option. He's not a superstar, but if he's wide receiver four, you could do a lot worse than that. That's the point. Like, you're not giving him $15 million like he got last year. That was crazy. But you, you could get if you got Beckham on a four or $5 million deal, you, know, you mean to tell me he wouldn't help your receiver room? Have you seen what this receiver room looks like right now? 
One thousand percent. You're not going to pay exactly. You're not paying that big contract, and he's still he's still very good. It's not like you know, just you're not going to get the highlight guy, but he's going to be a very consistent pass catcher for you. No doubt, no doubt. Reminder, folks: MegaCast live in Vegas, Circa Resort and Casino is the place to be. Tyson, I'm going to pressure you right now. Oh. Will you call in at some point during the weekend to our MegaCast when I'm out in Vegas? Let's do it. I'm in. One hundred percent. I'll do it. There we go. Tyson has just been added to my esteemed guest list of confirmed people we will have on throughout the three-day marathon event, talking all things Jets in real time. During the draft, of course, book your stay at Circa Resort and Casino. Go to CircaLasVegas.com. Jet fans, I'm telling you, if you plan a trip to Vegas this summer or for the fall, there's no better place to be than Circa Resort and Casino. Let's keep rolling with some calls here before we say goodbye to Tyson. Keith Best, I mentioned another OGs on the line. What's up, Keith? Hey, Jake. How are you doing? What's up, Keith? Uh, I appreciate the comments I got this morning. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm like I said, I'm old school. And, you know, I'm sitting listening to all these guys with uh, who gets where and what gets when. And, uh, you know, I watched the live uh, draft new, last uh, last year where they picked it when they, they honored Tipman onto the, onto the team. And I think – you know, up and down and up and down. This one goes here. That one goes there. I, I'm not familiar with any of that, but, you know, I'm old school and you never had this stuff. You know, the draft came up, you know, I, I lived in East Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, I went to the Rutgers games. Um, you never saw about a draft where they were going next. You just went to see them in play. But, you know, I have this feeling this year and I, I said this in the last couple of, you know, I, I trust that Joe Douglas will pro persevere and he's made some moves that are good. And I'm, I'm listening to a lot of people saying we still have Phil's holes to gap. And um, I hope, you know, that he could just make the deals that he's been doing. You know, when we got red Rick, I didn't believe that, you know, the guy came, you know, I, yeah, we lost Bruce Huff. You know, I don't know anything about the money, but I know Woody has got a checkbook that's huge. And he just has to open it up. That's right. And, and, and uh, Keith, you when, know, when, you, when you think about it, and thanks for the call, Keith, when you think about it, like the, the, the problem with Woody Johnson has not been spending money. It's been hiring the wrong people. Like, exactly. about, and I know like Tyson, you've talked about this on your channel, like, the owner's done his job here. He has allowed this regime to get plenty of time. He has not meddled. He's given them every opportunity. Like Joe Douglas is about to finish a six-year contract here. It's his fifth full offseason because he got hired in June of 2019. Like Robert Sala is going into year four, and he hasn't had a winning season yet. No one can say what he has not been patient with this regime. Yep. No, I mean, this, I mean, you can make a good case that somebody should have been fired last year. Exactly. Even especially Hackett, Carter, somebody. They gave Sala, keep your guys. These are all your guys. You keep them, do this. And but now they, they're both in the hot seat. But do you think like – Joe Douglas is in a better spot than Salah now, though. I don't think he should be. Like, I, 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 I like what Douglas has done, but like, are we going to conveniently leave out the fact that the reason why this team has failed to make the playoffs two straight years and they've been capped at seven wins is because he drafted one of the biggest busts in NFL history and then doubled down on said bust and did nothing to address yep. the backup quarterback spot even after Rodgers got hurt in Week One? Like, come on, man. Like, so I, I like what Joe Douglas has done. And I was on board with giving him and Salah a mulligan and bringing them back. And this is a make or break year. But like the, I, I, there's too many Jet fans, in my opinion. You tell me if I'm wrong, Tyson, that are like, Joe Douglas has a job. He gets to hire another coach if this doesn't work out with Salah. And I'm like, why? What has he done? It, like, he's done some good things, but like, come on, man. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah, they've grossly mishandled a couple things, man, where it's just like, you know, to me, it's like playoffs, everybody stays. No playoffs, everybody goes. Clean house to start over again. Yeah, and look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Robert Sala is this great head coach. I think the best thing I could say about him is it's incomplete, and he's an outstanding defensive coordinator. He's hired a good defensive staff. But the, re the reason why this team has sucked the last two years at the end of the year and hasn't been able to come through is because like all the O-line injuries happened, and they were playing one of the worst quarterback rooms ever assembled yeah. this past year. Like it, they, they have at least Tyrod Taylor now. If Thank God uh, Aaron can't play 17 games next year. Yeah, but sal has got a lot to prove as well as a coach. Yes, he man. does. Because he's got to win football games, tight football games, close games, claim games in December that actually matter. Go toe to toe with great coaches. I mean, he, he lost to interim coaches last year. I mean, you were there at the game, but it's like he lost games. You're like, how are we getting out coached by guys? Just his first day here. 
Yeah, you know, well, so, think about it. He lost to Brandon Staley last year, yep. and he lost to uh, Arthur Antonio Smith. Pierce. Yeah. Arthur Smith, yeah. I mean, but, like, it's like he lost to them. It's like, well, why did they lose? Like, they, like the quarterback playing that Falcon game, they started Simeon the whole game. They probably win. Like, the quarterback exactly. playing the Raiders, oh, my God, Zach was horrendous that night, and Uzama had the brutal penalty that took yep. away the, the Brees Hall run. That was probably the most frustrating game of the year, the, the Raider game last year. Oh, my God. But he's got a, he's got a lot to prove in a big spot. And when like when things are going great, he's a, he's he's all about it. the emotion, the fire, things like that. When things are going bad, he goes the wave that way too, where he just kind of goes with the team and doesn't like. He sometimes I think he lacks leadership there. He's got to learn from his mistakes, man. Because it, it, no excuses this year, literally no excuses. His excuse we've talked about. Oh, it's the quarterback. It says you have no more excuses. I'm tired of it. The team has too much talent now. And if he goes down, win with Tyrod Taylor. I don't care. Win football games now. Amen. Yeah, look, as much as I've killed Zach Wilson, he's not on this team anymore. Exactly. So it's like, no excuse. Win or get out. And that, yep. But that's that's for the GM, too. Like, I, I don't think J that Joe Douglas gets you know, to pick another coach. I, I find it hard to believe the Jets could go 7-10 and 10 next year, Tyson, or 8-9. and nine, And we're like, yep, Joe Douglas should then get another opportunity to hire a new coach as the playoff drought reaches now, what, 14 seasons at that point? Like, give me a break. Well, and look at it too. His job was to come get the quarterback and get the offensive line. Next year, you need how many pieces on the offensive line? At least two, and that has done right. And then the quarterback could be gone. Aaron Rodgers could retire next year. Then you look. I need a quarterback. I need offensive line again. And you couldn't need a head coach. <laughs> it's like crazy, it's wild, crazy. One last call for you, Tyson, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby Midnight. Hello, Bobby. Hi guys. Hi Tara. Up, Tyson, nice to meet you. Never met you before. How you doing, man? Are you from New York originally too? Jersey, Jersey Shore. Okay, New Jersey. Oh, Jersey Shore. I love that show. There you go. I love that show. <laughs> yes, I love the situation. Okay, I think. You're, what about you missing one game, uh, Jake? The Miami Dolphins. Oof. Remember that game, the Black Friday game. I unfortunately I do remember it. Yes. The no, the it Mary half time. Yeah. They should have not thrown that pass before halftime. I remember that game quite well. Or uh -oh. they should have covered the kickoff return and not allowed a 99-yard return. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's another one. I forgot about that one, too. Yep. OBJ is going to be good if you pick him up. I think that will be a good pickup for you guys. No? It depends on how much money he wants and what his role would be. But I, I don't well, need the idea of adding him. Much this year, so. Correct. But I, I, I rather I think if they were to sign Beckham, I think that's something that yeah. would happen post-draft at this point. Oh, uh, post draft. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see where you come from. And also, the Yankees uh, play a doubleheader tomorrow and they got rained out tonight. Yeah. That's right. Gustbuster weather in Cleveland, Bobby. Yeah. And then um, when you're at that thing, the draft next week, can you do me a fit next when you're at the draft? Can what do you, you need? Find my friend, uh, you know, Gabe Rancy. You know him, right? Uh, does he live in Vegas, Bobby? Yes. He lives in Vegas. Well, if he stops by Circa, I'd be happy to say hello. No, he does his own show. They're going to be there, too. Remember, he was at the Super Bowl. He's your competition. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that, but he, he said he was going to say hello to him before. So. Bobby, if I happen to run into him, I will definitely say hello, and I'll pass along your well wishes as well. Uh, Bobby's the best fan. Best callers. Super chat here from Dano, and then we'll let Tyson run. Left, left tackle, quarterback, right tackle give, equals 106 years old, 106. Offensive tackle or slide back, take offensive tackle. Look, the the, the people that are pro offensive linemen, no matter what, I completely get it. That's kind of where I'm at, too, if they can't get Rome. Like, I, I'm on board with that strategy. It's hard to hate against them, man. We've seen it, what, the last couple of years, what offensive line means to this team, especially with Aaron Rodgers. You need to protect them and if, go about any way you can do it. I, you can't be mad about it. Like a big offensive line, completely understand it. Third round, go receiver, sign a veteran after that, and you'll be fine. Yep, um, 100%. 100%. Tyson, anything you want to plug before I let you run here, man? Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Oh, I don't plug nothing, man. This is an honor to talk to you, man. You're like, I'm not like a draft guy. You wanted me to come on. I'm like, what the hell am I going to say? I don't know <laughs> this. No, this is your, your, your channel is awesome. Dude, your work ethic is ridiculous, dude. Seriously. Thank you, literally, you. You literally change the game, like your constant streams and your coverage, your excellent interviews, exclusive interviews. But that's my one question I had to ask you, though. What's been your favorite interview so far? You're, you're living like a fan's dream right now. Well, I, I, do you mean just on the YouTube channel or like radio yeah. career too? YouTube channel. Man, you know what? I, I'll count name it, even though it originally aired on ESPN New York because I pre-taped it on video and put it on this channel. That, that was so special for me just because 
Um, it was like my first ever summer show on 98.7, but also I got a chance to put it on YouTube. And it's Joe freaking Namath. And like the reason why he was doing the interview was he wasn't able to make it to Canton this summer for Klecko and Revis. So he wanted to do an interview to basically share his thoughts on that. So his guy reached out to me and we arranged it. And like, it was pretty cool that like I was the show that got to like talk to Joe about that. So that one, that one definitely stands out if I could only pick one. Now, did you get like, did you get like starstruck or like you get little, like little, like anxiety doing it? Or you're just like, you know what? It's you know, like you stay cool with it. Yeah. I think you get a little, you get, you get those nerves or excitement. I'm, I'm like, I don't really get starstruck as much right. as like, Maybe I used to. I'm kind of like, I don't want to say I'm used to it because you're not, but like, yeah, you know, you got like a job to do. You're like focused yeah. on doing the job. But yeah, like you definitely have, you de I think there's a heightened urgency. You want to do a good job. It's not yeah. like I'm nervous, like I'm going to fall no. apart, but it's like you want to, you want it to go well because you have such a great opportunity for the yeah. audience to watch something cool. So you want to do a good job. And it's a fine line too, because you want to ask questions that are like appropriate to like the subject. But you also want to ask your own personal questions too. Like you put a little spin on it too. Like, you know what? Things you always wondered, right? Yeah, and I don't want to be like I don't want to come across like I'm a Jet fan. Everyone knows that, but I'm not like a fanboy. You know, I, mean, like, right. I want to be like yeah. I want to like be be professional while also making it clear like I'm a Jet fan who's interviewing Joe Namath. That type of fine line. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough, man. That's all. Yeah, I was watching your interviews. I'm like, how like you have the best life. I'm like, that was so cool. <laughs> but you have, but it's cool because when a lot of times you get like a like a, a, a nationwide guy, they don't ask questions we want to hear, right? So if you have you from perspective of a Jet fan, you ask more Jet related questions that we all talk about every day, where it's like things we want to, you know discuss which is awesome dude yeah i i love uh I, I love getting a chance to like like the super bowl and the combine like you get people on and it's like well i could like if it's on the youtube channel i could jet focus it like i you know yeah. dom c brings up the uh brendan rice interview from the super bowl he was awesome like i spent the whole interview with a jet draft prospect talking just about like playing for the jets like yep. that to me is cool or like you know, you get Rich Eisen on and everyone's like, maybe we'll ask Rich like one question about the Jets at the end if it was like a national interview he was doing. Yep. But like he's coming on a Jet show. Yep. We could do 15 minutes of just Jet talk. Like th those are the most fun interviews, you know? Yeah. And that and like they're like like fan questions, like things we always talk about or argue about. You can kind of spin it your own way. And that's what makes it interesting because like some of the other videos, like they're, they're boring as hell because it's like very like the neutral interview. Same question, same answer. You get nothing out of it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I try to try to, uh, you know. Say it, it, keep the audience entertained, and if, if the guest senses that you're enthusiastic or you're knowledgeable, you know your stuff. Like yep. that's that's super uh, that's super helpful towards like getting a better interview out of them. Yep. You know, yeah, one hundred percent. Now you're killing it, dude. Tyson, you're the man. Enjoy a uh, little UFC three hundred tomorrow yes, night, sir. Thanks for having me on, man. I definitely appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. The great Tyson Rouch from Let's Talk Jet. Shout out to Tyson coming on the show. Subscribe to his channel. Hit the like button, everybody. Even Alan is saying something nice to me. Wow. The Jordan Malata interview you loved. And for me to compliment Jake is real difficult. I appreciate that. Malata was awesome. I'm happy he got paid. He was probably the coolest athlete we interviewed at Radio Row uh, back in February. Um, you, know what, you know what the best interview will be? When we get Rodgers on the show. When does that happen? Aaron. Come on, Aaron. I can't pay you a million a year like McAfee does, but I'm sure I could get a lot of super chats for that interview. <laughs> Maybe we could come close knowing how great this audience is. Uh, Hawk says, Jake, your interview with Connie was also top notch. Connie Carberg is a legend. Love Connie. We will get her on the show soon. Alan says, is Cole on next Friday? That's the plan. He was on Monday this week. He'll be on Friday next week. I got a fun interview tomorrow. I'm having my old co-host on radio, Cody Stutes, come on. Cody is a draft junkie. He has been breaking down all these prospects. He is really, really glued to the wide receiver prospects. So we're going to go in depth on some of the day two guys. We know about the big three. We've done film studies on that. But we'll talk about the Malachi Corey Lees of the world. We'll talk about the Ricky Persos of the world. We got a lot. Rich says, Alan actually has a photo of Jake on his wall. Probably. Alan's never missed a show. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Alan watches the show more than my family does. Uh, Rick uh, Kent says CJ Mosley was pretty great too. Mosley was awesome. Uh, we are still working on the Joe Tipman interview, by the way. Someone asked me for an update on that earlier. It's in the works. He just got engaged though, and I moved, so we really couldn't find a time. But when Joe Tippman comes on the show, it is all credit to Neil, who was on vacation at the same resort Joe Tippman was at, recognized him, went up to him, and then I got a FaceTime from Neil, and there's Joe Tippman and I on the phone for five minutes talking. 
So shout out to Neil. Big fella says, I really like the interview you did with Marty Lyons. Love Marty Lyons, man. Um, Dano says, cancel Cole. You don't like Cole, Dano? Gee, I couldn't tell based on all your comments slandering the man. Let's go to Carlo. He's up next on the show. What's up, Carlo? Hey, Jake. Not much. How about yourself? What's up, man? How are you? Happy Friday. Hey, happy Friday as well. Yeah, uh, I've been tuning in for a while to you. I... Uh-oh. Did we lose him? Uh, there we are. Sorry about that. You're good. Um, I usually don't get a chance to get on. So a couple things. I mean, the draft talk, obviously, is super exciting forever. You know, the draft was the Jets Super Bowl, as you, a long-term separate Jet fans know. But still, so it's still near and dear to my heart. And it's super important. A couple quick facts before the draft is I know um, – Ozama, the tight end, got picked up by the Eagles. From what I understand, if one more of our free agents gets signed, uh, like Carl Lawson, for example, or Makai Becton, then we'll get a fourth-round pick in next year's draft as compensation. That's a little tidbit. But as far as the draft is concerned, you know, I if you told me uh, Brock Bowers, which is the big name, right, um, was going to be a Travis Kelsey, then it would be a no-brainer, right? We'd all be like, all right, sign me up. I obviously no one can predict that, but based on his stats and looking into the couple of the big wide receivers like Adunze, here's Bowers who can also line up in the slot, who can block, who almost has the same speed if you look at their their 40 time, who has better weak span and, and who can block, and he's a plug and play guy. When you hear um our, our GM speak about getting an impact player, right? That's the operative word. What player get short of maybe a Dunze or if rare one of the wide receivers gets dropped down, where can you get a plug and play player like that? I know it's the more sexy pick and getting an offensive lineman would be great security for a lot of uncertainty with those injuries. But he's the type of guy that I see immediately not only fitting in well with the two wide receivers we have, but being a great safeguard where, you know what, maybe Aaron Rodgers doesn't need five seconds to throw the ball if Bowers could do a little quick slant and be open at about three, right? That's what I got, Jake. I just want to shout out on that. I I see your point. I understand it. I think the argument is, well, how does Bowers compare to, like, Brian Thomas Jr. or Xavier Worthy or A.D. Mitchell or, like, Lad McConkey? Like, typically you see receivers hit the ground running right away, and Bowers – like well, here. We'll let you go, Carlo. We got, uh, I got the gist of your uh, your point there. Thanks for making the call. Typically, receivers hit the ground running right away. Tight ends don't. Especially tight ends that high. Now, if you tell me Bowers is Sam Laporta, he better be. All right, and I'll and I'll root for him. I hope I hope that's the case. I just don't love the idea of doing it that high. I don't. I think you can get a more impactful wide receiver, or I rather raise my floor and protect myself from injury disaster on the O-line and just take the best lineman there at 10 in a stacked O-line class. It's a stacked receiver class, stacked O-line class. So of course the Jets take a tight end. That's what I, I just, I can't get my head around it. If they trade back and do it, that's different. Ladies and gentlemen, we have super chats coming in towards the Aaron Rodgers interview fund. Oh my God. <laughs> Ron, I don't think if Aaron did the show, he needs, he needs the money. <laughs> I appreciate it, my man. This more likely than not, this is going towards the uh, Jake Asman going out in New York City this weekend fun. But I appreciate you, Ron. Thank you, Johnny, with a super chat. He writes in. I just gonna be fun. Unreal. You guys are the best. Bobby Midnight using his free super chat for being an as maniac. Yeah, love it. He's been an as maniac for four months. Jake, you're awesome, my friend. Love your channel very much. We love you, Bobby. You're the man. Yeah, man, hopefully I can meet you at a game this year, Bobby. That'd be great. Peter checks in. Jake, after watching the highlights of the offensive lineman, I think Latham might be the best one. Uh, Latham has maybe the highest ceiling. You could argue it. If they took Latham, I would not hate that because he would get to sit and learn, which would be awesome. Ron says, Jake, that's not even enough for parking. Well, thankfully, I don't need a I don't need a car right now, Ron, but you're right. <laughs> you're, you're right. That is not enough for parking in New York City, 20 bucks, which is crazy. Let's be real. 20 bucks, that's like one pitcher at the bar 
you know? Crazy how much everything costs nowadays. Plumpy Boy with a super chat. Boom! Going out, here's a drink on me. Ah, oh, very kind of you, Plumpy. Thank you. Open phone lines if anyone wants in on the conversation here. Typically, our Friday shows are fun. If you got a cocktail, you're more than welcome to drink it on the air. A little happy hour on the Jake Asman YouTube channel here. Johnny says, let's start a fund to get Aaron on the show. Look, how about we do this? We don't need to pay Aaron to come on the show, but if we do ever get him on the show, we will raise money for his charity of choice. We'll take all the super chats and we'll donate it to his charity of choice. Like, that would be cool. Something like that. I, you know, I'm not going to get in Aaron Rodgers' pockets here, but I think he's made plenty of money in his life. <laughs> By the way, bad teammate cancer Aaron Rodgers just organized a charity football game last weekend that a bunch of NFL stars played in out in California. But he's such a bad guy, right, Chris Candy? He's a cancer. Uh, he's the worst. Uh, he's fooled you Jet fans. Uh, I'm wrong, and I'm going to continue to double down on this terrible take. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why... Jets fans can't see it. You don't know why because you're blind. Rat Diddy says, Jake, what happened to Woody coming on? You met his people. Woody said he'd come on the show. That was a true story. I shared it on the air last summer when I sat right in front of him during Revis's Hall of Fame speech with Joe Beningo and my buddy, the great Dan Budick. What happened was Woody said he'd come on, told me who at the Jets to reach out to, which I did. and. Then it was Woody's not doing any interviews. So the ball is in Woody's court. He said he, quote, was aware of who I was, has seen the show. He told Beningo, he's like, you know who this is? And Joe's like, oh, yeah, he's got the big podcast. And Joe had no idea what YouTube was, as you would expect. <laughs> Love you, Joe, but you know, it's true. And that's how that happened. But we, we did not get Woody on. So that's not, believe me, that's not on me. I tried. Joe checks in with a super chat for us. Thank you, Joe. Jake just was watching Brian Thomas Jr. tape. He is money. He's an excellent talent. I think we're going to do a film study on him next week with Fialco, and we'll get more in depth on him. Bobby says, Jake, do you know what home game you're going to this year? Bobby, any home game you make it to, I will make sure I'm there, even if I don't have a ticket to the game, just to say hello to you. All right? Uh, Mr. Bonesy writes in Alan is sick of Gary getting all the attention we get it Alan you're still the villain yeah I'm sensing Alan uh, a little jealousy Gary has kind of become the uh, the new target in the comment section Fialco writes in just saw Rich Samini said trade up to 8 would cost our 2 fourths sign me up if so I would do it I'd prefer one fourth this year or third next year and have a fourth this year for a player that could help you, but I would do it if I had to. A Rod's left Achilles says, Can we fire Salah and make Obrick a head coach before we lose him? Come on, man. Just shut the f up. I did not ask for the dumb opinion that came out of your ass, so shut the f up. That doesn't make any sense. Who hired Jeff Ulbrick? Whose defense is Jeff Ulbrick coaching? You fire Salah now so we can make Ulbrick. Well, well, how do we know Jeff Ulbrick would be a good head coach, by the way? It's a completely different job. Todd Bowles is a great DC. Norb Turner was a great OC. Josh McDaniels is a great OC. It's a different job, man. And by the way, give credit to Bowles. He's clearly gotten better as a coach. Also helps when you have good quarterback play. Daquan Hughes, Super Chat. What's up, Jake? What do you think about a Jets Falcons Super Bowl? Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see any way the Falcons are in the Super Bowl. But if you tell me that's the matchup, sign me up. I don't care who the Jets play. <laughs> Jets in the Super Bowl. What do I think about it? I'm it. Where do I sign? Let's go to Johnny. He's up next on the program. Johnny, what do you got for us? Hey, what up, Jake? How you holding up, man? What's up, man? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, bro. Hey. 
Um, I called him because of the whole Canty thing again, bro. It exactly, dude. You see him try to double down on Twitter and tweet at me. Did he really? I, I don't oh, have yeah. social. I don't have social media, man. So, you know, I'm one of the few that doesn't. Have made that. no. Made, it, it tried to be like I feel for Jet fans. You know, uh, it's not you, the fans. It's uh, you know, fan ownership and management making the same mistake by going with Aaron Rodgers again and no backup plan. I'm like, they have Tyrod Taylor. They're not taking a quarterback. 10th overall your comment was moronic own it and then you called Aaron Rodgers a cancer which you conveniently leave out you called you called a good guy beloved by coaches and teammates a cancer which is outrageously offensive to anyone who's ever dealt with cancer so crazy exactly bro and like I kind of go back onto that interview that he just had on the um I fly one yeah very good interview and I, I think for myself the part that I was like damn man like this dude really does check his own ego at the door type of thing, right? Was when he was like literally almost broke down, try to hold it in and saying that I um, I needed help. And it's so difficult for me to ask for help. That just talks volumes to me, man, about a person. And right then and there, like, I think that trumps anything that anybody's ever said that's been negative about Aaron Rodgers and all that. And I truly believe now him saying that stuff, dude, he has the, the biggest, if not the most enormous chip on his shoulder right now to prove something this year. And don't be surprised if he goes off and is like MVP-ish Aaron Rodgers, which would be amazing. But we don't even need MVP Aaron Rodgers. We just need competent QB play at this point, right? And, I mean, that Canty stuff with that whole cancer thing, man, like it, it's exactly to your point. People that have dealt with it and people that are going through, what a slap to the face, man. So, like, I know that guy, like, he did an interview with you and all that and whatnot, but. He never did an interview with me. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. No, I mean, he's a coworker of mine, but if he says, if he has a bad sports opinion, I have no problem calling him out on it, you know? Yeah, so kudos to you for doing that, man. And, hey, let's go with the Knicks, baby. The Knicks, man. So. Let's go. Appreciate you, bro. J-E-T-S. It's Knicks Nets tonight, baby. Knicks just keep winning, baby. Busy couple days at the Garden, right? Knicks, Nets tonight. Islander, Rangers tomorrow. Allen writes in, when Bobby and BMAC rip on me, I know I've made it. To which Bobby then wrote, Allen, you are a moron. I love it. I love it. Hell yeah, Bobby. Get his ass. Yeah. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. If you call it and have a cocktail, it's happy hour, baby. The weekend is here, folks. Um, let's see. David says Mike DeVito was a good interview. DeVito was a great interview, man. When he got emotional talking about losing uh, to the Steelers in 2010 in the playoffs, oh, man, what a great guy. Love Mike DeVito. Joe writes in, what about the interview with Mike Lombardi? Jake smacked him in the face. I owned his ass, that interview. Let's call it for what it is. And also, go look at how that interview is now aged after you see what the moves the Jets have made this offseason. Meanwhile, his Patriots are a dumpster fire. They suck. And Bill Belichick, the great Bill Belichick, can't even get a job. Um... Mike says, if Rodgers has an average season by his standards, he'll be a top three best Jets quarterback season of all time. Yeah, it will be. I've said that a lot. Steve writes in, Steve Kent, any relation to Clark? Jake, after last year, do you still believe in Nathaniel Hackett with this new offense and Aaron Rodgers coming back? Yeah, Nathaniel Hackett's job is to get Aaron Rodgers' coffee every morning. Like, that's the job. I do I have concerns. Yeah, obviously, but Rodgers takes care of a lot of it. I mean, to quote Garrett Wilson, he Aaron is the offense. D Rock says, like the video, Jake bust his ass to go live with us. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to, but please like the video. Thank you, D Rock. Appreciate that. Comments, questions. Super Chats will continue to cut our line. If you're tuned in live right now, we got 402 viewers live. I'm doing a giveaway at the end of this weekend, and all you have to do to be eligible is just follow me on Instagram at Jake Asman. Take out your phone, open the IG app at Jake Asman. I add your name to the list, and you have a chance to win 
a Gus Buster umbrella, the number one umbrella in all of golf in honor of Masters weekend. So hit the like button to be eligible and follow me on my Instagram at Jake Asman. If you don't already follow at Jake Asman show, follow at Jake Asman show and I'll add your name twice. So maybe some of you already follow me at Jake Asman, but you don't follow at Jake Asman show. Well, if you follow that account, we'll add your name to the list. You have a chance to get two entries in the random name giveaway to get that uh, Gus Buster umbrella prize. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Shout out to all the Asmaniacs. Yesterday was a banner day for Asmania. We gifted a ton of memberships. Ricky NY finally got his membership on the first show of the day. So it was tremendous. Allen says, Knicks are, are lucky. Doc Rivers coaches the Bucks. He's an awful coach. Why are the Knicks lucky? Every team in the East is lucky. How are your Hawks, Allen? Oh, they suck? Yeah, that's what I thought. The Knicks are better than the Bucks, by the way. All right? They just smacked them around in Milwaukee the other night. I think the Knicks are as good as any team in the East besides Boston when they're fully right. And the Knicks just went into Boston last night, and the Celtics wanted the game at the beginning, and the Knicks beat, beat their asses. So it's going to be a fun, fun spring at the Garden. I'll tell you that much. Jersey writes in, don't catch much. Love your work, Jake. Go Jets from down under. Fan of the team since the 80s. Wow, down under, Jersey. Awesome. Maybe you and Craig from Australia should hang out. Appreciate that. Hater writes in, Sala epitomizes modern head coaches. Knows and understands both sides of the ball. Understands psychology of modern players. True CEO, coach of the year in 24. I'll tell you what. I don't think Robert Sala is a terrible coach. I can't sit here and say he's a good coach. I could say it's incomplete. He's got good qualities I like. There's some things that concern me, no doubt. I think last year was a big learning year for this head coach. And I think he'll be better for what happened last year, this year. I do believe that. But no excuses. He's got to win. There's some concerning things that happened last year, even with the quarterback play being trash. They have to win. Bobby wants to know, Jake, did you see Mr. Softy today? Bobby, I have not. I hope I see it soon, though, so I can tell you I, I have, because I feel like you're going to ask me about this every time you call in. <laughs> Dave says, Salah is just a softie. He actually believe that works. I mean, are we going to act like he, he, he like, never criticized his players? Like, he benched Alan Lazard. He said the quiet part out loud about his contract. He said he needs to discover his love for football again. Like, I don't know, man. You try winning with Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon as your quarterback and the most offensive line injuries in football. How many games should Tyler have won last year? They did win three of their final five. Well, it's not good enough. I'm not celebrating seven wins, but all right. Robert Sala is not Adam Gase. He's not Rich Kotite. Then we got to remi remember that. D-Rock says, will we get a veteran running back behind Brees? I think so. I also don't rule out a draft. A draft pick. Joe Douglas has drafted a running back every single draft that he's been the Jets general manager. Every single one. So I could definitely see him drafting another running back. I mean, I'd be, I think we'd be naive to think that that's not a, a possibility, you know, hit the like button. If you're tuned in only 217 likes and 400 people watching the math is not mathing open phone lines on our Gus Buster hotline. We'll wrap up unless we get some more calls and super chats here. Shout out to Tyson Rouch. If you're just tuning in, he joined earlier. He was on with us for. Uh, about the first hour of the show. 
Let's see. Darius says, anyone see speak every time they bring up the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, they trash us. Yeah, unless James Jones is on the show to set him straight. I don't watch that show, but I've seen the clips. Alan says, push comes to shove. Bucks will beat the Knicks in the Eastern Conference semis if they both get there. You sure about that? I wouldn't be. What's Doc Rivers' track record in the playoffs? We sure Giannis is now going to be healthy? I don't know about that one. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Kent has just gifted five. That's right. Five. As Maniac memberships, baby. Let's go. Free stuff. The following five listeners just officially became as Maniacs. Here we go. Mark Nielsen, Michael DeRuz, Watchman, J-Man Hop, M123. Congratulations, courtesy of the great Rick Kent. Maybe a relation to Clark Kent. I don't know. Coming through with five. That's right. Five. Memberships. Rick says, I've been in and out of the chat because I'm working, so it's the least I can do. Very nice of you, Rick. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Danger checks in. He's using his as maniac free super chat of the month. Curious how the Jets view Carter Warren. Do they think he's capable of holding his own if needed? Also, Barkley and Shaq picked the Cavs over New York. Joke. They also picked the Pacers over the Knicks, which is silly. They called the Knicks the second best team in the East, and then they said, oh, but Indiana's going to beat them. Yeah, okay. I would love for the Knicks to play the, the Pacers in the first round. I look at everything you hear about, um, everything you hear about Carter Warren is the Jets like him, but I, I have no idea how they truly feel about him. I mean, obviously they didn't think enough about him to start. I mean, you hope in year two, he could take a step forward. I think there's talent there. He fell in the draft because of injury. And then he got hurt again in training camp. Like he's, he, he's a more talented prospect than where he was drafted. Can he stay on the field? Or can he take a step forward? Lee writes in Stout Bar, great place to watch a Knicks game. No doubt. I've been to Stout many times. And there's a couple of locations, which is cool. There's the one by the garden. There's one um, on the east side. There's a couple of good stouts. Um, let's see. Comments, questions, super chat. Shout out to Rick Kent once again. He's been the only person to gift an Asmaniac membership during the show. So way to way to go, Rick. Very kind of you. Bonesy wants to give Salah credit for finding and developing Quincy into an all-pro. Yeah, absolutely. Bobby says, Can I call in again? Bobby, you could call in again. All right. You could call in again. Tom A says, so Barrels is next door to Stouts, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, people, if you want an authentic New York slice of pizza, there's probably no better place in the entire city than Sabaros. All right? If Michael Scott eats there, I eat there. I, see, I, I think there's a We Want Bobby chant going on. We want Bobby. We want Bobby. Bobby, you call back in and you go after Alan, all right? Um, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Bobby time. Hello, Bobby. Bobby Midnight. Let's call back in. I'm back. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, Bobby. Pizza has the best, uh, um, New York has the best pizza, I should say. They do. Now, Bobby, what is your message to Alan? Alan, you are a moron. The Knicks are going to win against the Pacers. I think you should not. Is he from New York originally, this guy? Alan, I, I, yes, I think he's from New York. 
I think he should be booted out of New York. I think he should live in like Vermont, like I do. Well, and I, I go he, down there. I think Alan lives in one of the Carolinas, but is moving to Texas. Oh, good. Let's get rid of him. Go fly out there, Alan. Do not come on this show again, man. <laughs> yeah, go out, fly out to uh, whatever you're going. We don't need your negative. I'm a giant fan. I'm a positive Jeff fan, and you are a negative nanny. So that's that's right. Are. I am positive all the time when I call. Him. And I like Mr. Bonesy. And I wanted to ask uh, Johnny what he means, white beaver. What is that? <laughs> Uh, someone What's in the that? chat could explain it to you. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. It doesn't actually mean he he beats his wife, for the record, Bobby. Uh oh, I no, I don't do that either. No, I, I I I of course you don't. You're a good guy, Bobby. No, 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 I don't have a wife. You know, right, well, but I don't. But, but if you had a wife, you wouldn't. No, no, I wouldn't. Never touch a woman. Of course. What is he talking about? That other thing, I don't even know what he's talking about. It's an it's another term for a tank top. Oh, a tank top. No, I yeah. wouldn't look good in tank tops. People will die if I wore that. Trust me. Why not, Bobby? You not you look like you're a handsome guy. Not that uh, I'm pretty ugly. So are you going so. to a Yankee game this year? I was at opening day. I mean, this year coming up soon. That's what I want to make sure me and my brother meet you at Yankee Stadium. And you, then you also tell me the game Johnny. you're going to, Bobby, and I'll do my best. All right, you tell me the game. Yeah, you're and going then also to. I want to be um, want you to be at the Jet game too when me and my brother go. I'm 20 We're minutes from going. MetLife, Bobby. I'll be there. Oh yeah, no, I know. I will be. I'll stay at my. Um, I work at um, Holly Inn. I can stay. At a good price over there. Hey, Bobby, that, someone wants to say hi to you. Who's that? Johnny. Bobby. What's up, bro? Johnny, I didn't understand that. No, I would not look good in that. Sorry. No, I was saying I call him a white beater. Some yeah, people no, call I, him a wife beater. So it just I depends wouldn't upon. look good in that. I'm telling you that much. I would not look good in that. Yeah, so we just need. No, nah, I don't know, man. That's not what I heard. No, 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 no. You don't want to know. No, 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 no. No, it's not Back what I when I was like in my 20s, maybe. That was like two years man. ago. You're 29. No, I'm, I'm going to be 56. In, I'm going to be 56 in August. Where's Mr. Bonesy? He should get on here, too. We'd like to. You should, you should give Mr. Bonesy a call. He's up. He's actually I, at work. I called him the other day. He was not at work. Told me not to I, Bobby, I hear you've been calling the shoe store a lot, checking on Bones. Well, I, yeah, twice. I called him the first day. He was shocked. <laughs> then I called him the second day, but he wasn't working on Wednesdays. But he's my friend, Mr. Bones. We love you. You all got to get together, go to a digit game. We got to meet each other at the gym. Hey, go let's go crazy to the Pittsburgh game. Pittsburgh game. Let's go to Pittsburgh. What day is that? Do you know? We don't know yet. I don't know. Oh, yeah, but, that's right. The schedule will come. Peace. Oh, yeah, bye, Johnny. <laughs> any uh, any so, final thoughts, Bobby? Yeah, well, you. I told you, you're an awesome guy. Thanks, let Bobby. Let us talk on your show. People don't let you let you call in. But you let me call in. I appreciate it. Always, Bobby. Because I'm a and, giant. Hey, are you excited about... Um, look, giant Mr. Bones, he's watching the show, Bob, uh, Bobby. Hi, Mr. Bones. I see your comment. Um, do you like the Giants pick up of Boykin? Was that a good pick up for the Giants? I think the Giants have had an interesting offseason so far. I'm, I'm excited to see what they yeah. do in the draft. We picked up some offense line, and we picked up this defensive guy from, uh, we just picked up the guy from Buffalo, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So are you proud of the Giants picking up all those things? Too? I think they've had a good offseason, Bobby, and good call. Second call of the show for the great Bobby. But I'm curious to see what they now do in the draft. Are they going to take a receiver at six? Could they trade up for a quarterback? Are they trading in the first round for a quarterback? They don't go quarterback at six. Uh, we'll see. We will see. What a show. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Thanks to Tyson Rauch, who was a part of it. Check out the first show on the day earlier if you want 
Mel Kuyper's breakdown on the Jets' options and the draft. He has them taking Bowers, but he explained why and also went through different trade scenarios. So I think a lot of Jet fans will certainly find that interesting. You see the hat I'm wearing? This is a Huga House hat. If you want the same one or a different one, head over to HugaHouse.com and use promo code ASMIN at checkout. It's one of their many vintage-looking hats that you see me rocking on the show all the time. Huga House is my official hat. It's also the hat QB1 is in all the time, the great Aaron Rodgers. So check it out, HugaHouse.com, promo code ASMIN, so you can get 15% off. Hope everyone enjoys their Friday night. Everyone enjoys their weekend. I got a big-time guest joining me tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., Eastern time. So we'll give you a morning show tomorrow to kick off your Saturday. A lot of, lot of content coming this month, folks. A lot of content with the draft now less than two weeks away. All right. Thanks again to everyone for their support. My name is Jake Asman. This has indeed been the Jake Asman show. And as we take you into this fine weekend, there's really only one thing I could play that will fire the people up, the likes of which we really have not seen before. And that, of course, is this. If it moves, hit it. If it don't move, hit it. And if you're not sure, guess what? Hit it.